Before we begin with our video, we just wanted to apologize for the poor quality of the last video we made on calendars. There were some technical difficulties and we will make sure to improve our video's quality in the future. Thank you and please enjoy the video. Hi all, today we are going to discuss the strange cosmic object in space known as black hole. Also, we should all know that we, our planet, with the solar system is in Milky Way galaxy, which homes about 100 million black holes. Please share this video to your friends and family. Also, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Now, everything on this planet is made from out of supernovas, which is why we call that we are all stardust and nothing special. I'm not here to discuss how black holes are made, but I want to briefly discuss this strange cosmic object. Black holes are point in space with extremely intense gravity from which even light cannot escape. Beyond a certain region, which is known as event horizon, not even light can escape the powerful tug of black hole's gravity and anything that ventures too close to the event horizon, be it a star, planet or a spacecraft, will be stretched and compressed like a putty in a theoretical process aptly known as spaghettification. We cannot directly see it but can be observed by the effects of their enormous gravitational fields on nearby matter. Generally, a hole means there is an absence of something, yet in a black hole there is a great deal of something. The official definition of a black hole is that a region of space-time which exhibits extremely strong gravitational effects. As we know, gravity is exerted by matter acting on other matter. The power of gravity a body exerts is in proportion to its mass. Since black hole produces extremely strong gravity, it has enormous mass. The volume occupied by a, by a black hole is relatively small compared to its mass, which means it is very dense. Black holes are formed when matter collapses in on itself, producing something very dense and its gravitational pull is too strong to even, like I said, light to escape from it. Fun fact, there are black holes that can pack 30 billion suns in our Milky Way galaxy at just 26,000 light years from our planet Earth at the center. There is a supermassive black hole named Sagittarius A star. It has a mass about 4 million times the sun. Now let's dive into the main topic. How we see black holes. They emit and reflect no light. They are invisible. But the astronomers try to detect their presence from their impact on other objects. If a star gets closer to a black hole, its orbital path will be affected. Similarly, any light from star or galaxy behind a black hole can be bent by the black hole's immense gravity, an effect called gravitational lensing. This way, we can see the star or the galaxy. If a black hole has strong enough gravitational pull to draw in gas from a nearby star or other matter, this heats up as it spirals into the black hole. It will emit a bright burst of radiation which space telescopes can pick up. Not all black holes will be displaying these telltale signs right now. So there are probably a lot of black holes out there that we don't know about. Supercharged gravity. Around each black hole is a boundary known as the event horizon. Once anything crosses the event horizon, the pull of the black hole's gravity becomes irresistible, and the object, 
or the light, is pulled in towards it, inevitably becoming part of the black hole. Not everything drawn towards the event horizon of a black hole ends as part of the black hole. Matter in orbit around a black hole outside the event horizon forms an accretion disk. Some of this, as it loses its angular momentum, will fall towards the black hole. Matter spinning around in accretion disks bump into other particles at a very high speed. And some matter and radiation are blasted back out into space. This is called an outflow and can provide another clue that the black hole is there. What will happen if we fall into a black hole? The gravity of a black hole is not infinite. Gravity is a function of mass, and the gravitational pull exerted on another body depends on the mass of them both and the distance between them. I did discuss previously in one of our videos why satellites don't fall. Just as Earth doesn't fall into the sun, a body straying near or orbiting a black hole will not inevitably fall into the black hole. We will link the video called Why Satellites Don't Fall in the description box below. However, if an object strays too close to the surface of the sun or the Earth, and it's drawn in by its gravity, if we were to send a spacecraft too close to a black hole, it too would be drawn towards it. After joining the accretion disk whirling around the event horizon, it could lose sufficient angular momentum to tip over and be pulled towards the center of the black hole. A strange thing would happen. Suppose something falls to Earth under the influence of gravity, the objects keep their shape. The impact of gravity on all areas of the object is pretty much the same. But it is different in a black hole. The gravity is so immense that even over a short distance, such as the length of a spacecraft or the height of an astronaut, the changing effects of gravity with distance have an impact. Here, the spacecraft or the astronaut closest to the black hole, the bit going in first, would be subject to greater gravitational pull than the part furthest from it. That means that one end would accelerate towards the black hole more quickly than the other end, resulting in stretching, or as astronomers call it, spaghettification. The object being drawn out into a very long, thin strip. This would only happen for a moment, then the object would disappear into the void, become part of the black hole, and become super dense matter. Now let's conclude this video. When a large star goes supernova and leaves behind a black hole, it occupies the center of the space previously occupied by the star. It shares the same field of gravitational impact that the star had, so will not suck in nearby stars or survive planets. Anything vulnerable would already have been drawn in by the star's gravity. Astronomers believe that the new black holes that form now are due to collapse of massively dense stars. It is truly too late for a primordial black hole to form or even a supermassive black hole to form because supermassive black holes can only form with new formation in galaxies. Our sun is too small to become a black hole. It would require a star twice the size of our sun to take the supernova black hole route to death. Astronomers have classified black holes into three types. First one is primordial black holes formed soon after the Big Bang from which the universe may have formed. They can be as tiny as a single atom with a mass of many millions of kilograms. The second is the stellar black holes are medium size and they form with us when a star dies. The star typically explodes in a spectacular supernova by throwing out light and matter. The rest of the star collapses in on itself, leaving a black hole where the star once was. This black hole will have much of the mass of the star, original star, but occupies in a tiny space. For example, a black hole 
with a mass of 20 times that of our sun might only be 15 kilometers across. Finally, the largest are the supermassive black holes. Like primordial ones, they are likely to be very old, probably forming at the same time as the galaxies were taking shape. Most of the large galaxies are thought to have a supermassive black holes at the center. The black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy is known as Sagittarius A. It is about the size of the sun but have 4 million times its mass. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for something new and have a super day. Cheers.